Some cool edits coming down your way right after the intro. Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Mo and I'm back with another exciting tutorial. Now, before we start, by the time you're watching this, I'll be in London. So if you're around that area and you're kind of free, let's meet up. Hit me up on Instagram. Let's have some coffee. All right, back to the tutorial. Special thanks to Oscar who provided these awesome photos. I'll leave a link to his Instagram in the description below. Make sure to check him out. So this is a good example of what car event photography is. And I'm going to use Photoshop to show you how to spice it up just a tad, or maybe a little bit more. So let's go. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Before you go, thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, share love. And if I reach the targets for this video, this might be the next tutorial. Okay, that's it, let's go. All right, so let's kick this one off in Lightroom with basic adjustments. And the only two adjustments that I made were recovering the highlights and the shadows. So let's have a look at the before. There you go. And that's the after. And I've just used these two sliders to recover the highlights and one to recover the shadows. All right, so let's start with Photoshop. And the first thing I did, I went to Google and I looked for the rear light of the Lamborghini and that is the original photo. I masked it out and I basically just added these in. I then used the transform tool to adjust this on the car and uh, yeah that's pretty much it. So let's zoom in and see the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Now to complement this effect I added a layer with uh, with a blending mode of soft light and I painted it in red. So let's see before and this is the after. Very subtle but it adds up to the effect. I then dodged and burned the car using different techniques. So this is for the dodging and this is for the burning. And if I would remove the mask, this is how it looked like. And I selectively started dodging and burning the car or areas of the car. It's easy and straightforward. I'll leave a link to one of my videos explaining it in the description below. Now I tried adding the channel mixer and I think if you've been following me along, this is one of the things that I do. I desaturate the photo and I then bring back the colors to it selectively. But I quite didn't like how it looked like. So I disabled the channel mixer and I decreased the opacity on this layer at 29%. And because I've covered these topics in some other videos, I'll be referencing them by adding a link in the description below. Now, moving onwards, I started cleaning up the photo using the clone stamp tool. I'm not going to go over the clone stamp tool because there are plenty of videos on YouTube explaining how to clean up your photos using the clone stamp tool. All right, so once I was done cleaning up the area, I adjusted the color of the car using the hue and saturation and the selective color. So within the hue and saturation, I just selected the yellows, I boosted the saturation a bit and kind of shifted the color a tad, not too much. With the selective color, I adjusted the yellows again in here and I added more yellow as you can see. So let's see the before. And this is the after, before, after. Now, these are very subjective and it's very experimental. I just move the sliders until I see something that I like and leave it there. All right, next I added a camera raw filter to bring that contrast and brighten the photo a bit. I thought it was a bit dull, so I needed that. Let me show it to you. And these are the camera raw settings. I added a bit of exposure and bumped up the whites, boosted the clarity and the dehaze and a bit of the vibrance and that's it. All right, so coming up next, I decided to clean up the number plate 
And there are several ways of doing this. And the way I did it is using the gradient tool. I traced around this area with a pen tool and used the gradient tool to fill it and added a mask. So let me demonstrate how this was done. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to pretend that this is my pen tool selection. I will then select two different colors. As you notice, this area is darker than the one below it. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to sample the color. And I'm going to switch the background or the foreground. I'm going to select another color. And there you go. So now we have a sample from dark to bright. I'm going to use the gradient tool and I'm going to hit shift. So I have a straight line and release. So again, shift, drag and release. Now this looks cool, but what's the problem with this? It looks a bit fake because it's so clean. We're going to add a bit of noise. So I'm going to noise, add noise. 1%. Let's see the before. This is the after. I don't know if this is something that you can see on your monitors, but I do see it. It adds up a bit of noise and that's perfect. Click OK and that's it. All right. So next I noticed that there was a reflection of a Porsche down here and I decided to play around with this technique and I painted that area. And this is a technique that we use to get rid of reflections that are really hard to remove. The technique is pretty simple. I'll select a brush, I'll sample a color from an area and then start brushing. Now, Alex has an amazing video that covers this topic. I really recommend you go over and watch it. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. So once I removed the reflection, I was left with the blank plate and I decided just to add Oscar as a name over there. Oscar deserves it because, well, he provided the photo. All right, so moving onward, I added a bit of smoke. Now I've used a set of brushes that were provided by Alex again. And again, he has a video on how to use these brushes and he is providing it for free. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. Like I said, because we've covered these topics in different videos, I'm going to be referencing them by adding a link to them in the description below. All right, so moving onward, I thought, you know what, let's add a backfire and I haven't done that. Or maybe I did that once with the RS3, but from this angle, it was so hard to add the same backfire that I added on my RS3. So I went to Google and I looked for a fireball black background and I found these, but they weren't in this state yet. Let me show them to you. So these are the photos that I've used and I just Googled a fireball black background. The reason why I wanted it in black background is to set the blending mode to screen and that removes the black portion of the photo. But you can see in this photo, it doesn't look the same. So let me show you what I've done. So this is the exact photo that I used and I'm going to set the blending mode to screen. But now I do have a fireball that is static and to add motion to it, I added a radial blur like so. So here are the radial blur setting, the amount of 33, zoom as a blur method, and perhaps you can keep this at best. Click OK, and it's going to transform this. And there you go. We added a bit of motion to the flare or the backfire. All right, let's go back to our layers. Once I added the layers, I added an adjustment layer, and it's a curve, just to brighten up that fireball a bit. And then I added another curve just to brighten the portion under the fire. I then added a blank layer and I painted in with orange just to add that kind of effect as a reflection of, of, of this fireball on the car and on the ground. So this is the before and this is the after. 
I then got a comment on Instagram that the fireball should be blue, but it really depends because I looked it up on Google, somewhere yellow, somewhere blue, and somewhere in between the two. So I kind of added that blue right in the middle just to compensate for that. Now it looks a bit odd and I think I need to drop its opacity down a bit like so and that's it. Now I know it's not perfect but if you have another solution please leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you think. All right we are almost there. The next two things are pretty simple and straightforward. Um, I cover this in another tutorial and that's the LUTs or color lookup and how to use them in Photoshop. So I added a color lookup and I used the Hilotite, I guess that's what it's called. And these were uh, available for free. So I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. And I set the opacity of this layer to 20% because 100% that looks really bad. So 20% is more than enough before, after, if you want to add a little bit more, I don't think it's going to hurt. And then I added a curves adjustment layer to add kind of a vignetting. Let me show you, this is the before and this is the after. And I just masked out the car to ensure that, you know, your eyes would draw directly to the car and gives it more focus. So let's see at the before and this is the after. All right, that's it. Let me show you the before and after. So before, and this is the after. And that's pretty much it. We've reached the end of this video. Now I'm looking forward to seeing you in London. And if you have any questions, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you in the next video.